All right, this is a video on the natural logarithm. We'll start off with an introduction and then do a few solved examples. I want to remind you first, however, what Euler's constant, which we refer to as E, is. It's approximately equal to 2.71828, a little bit less than 3. It's a constant that shows up when we're working with continuous compounding, continuous exponential growth, um, and many other areas as well. I want to remind you of a formal definition of E over here. It's equal to the limit as x approaches infinity. That terminolo terminology simply means imagine x being an incredibly large number. Of this expression, 1 plus 1 over x all raised to the x power. So you can imagine when we raise something to a huge power as x gets large, we're multiplying that base times itself many, many, many times, millions, billions of times times itself. And if we had a number larger than one, you would think that number would grow towards infinity. However, we're, we have a competing force that's happening here as well. We have a large number in the denominator of a fraction, which is making that fraction tend towards zero. So we, in, in the base of this power, we have one plus a tiny number then raised to a huge number. And those competing forces end up uh, kind of landing on E. They, they, uh, they, they will equal to uh, roughly 2.71828. And you can try this for yourself. Try plugging in a large number, a billion, a trillion, into that ex expression, 1 plus 1 over x, all raised to the x, and see what you get. Um, so that's just a quick reminder of E. The natural log of E, or excuse me, the natural logarithm is abbreviated LN. Okay, so you should be able to see that button on your calculator. And when we're talking about the natural logarithm of X, that's equivalent to saying the log base E of X. Okay, and so we just have a different symbol that we use for it, the letters LN. Um, it's more mathematically correct to refer to it as the natural logarithm of X and not LN of X, okay? Here's a picture of Euler, by the way, one of the most, one of the all-time great mathematicians um, who uh, E is named after. So we'll do a little bit of work with simplifying. Uh, the first one is 2 times the natural log of 15 minus the natural log of 75. And really, I just want you to remember this piece right here. The natural logarithm is simply the logarithm base E. Okay, so it's nothing more sophisticated or, or complicated than that. It's just a logarithm to the with the base of e. So we can apply our rules of x of logarithms here. And first, I'm going to apply the, apply the power rule, and I'm going to write this as natural log of 15 squared minus the natural log of 75. I can then simplify that a little bit. Natural log of 225 minus the natural log of 75. And then remember our quotient rule. The difference of two logarithms is the logarithm of the quotient. So we can compact or combine these two logarithms into one and then simplify that quotient as well. So this turns into the natural logarithm of three. That would be our final most, most uh, simplified answer we could get. Just as a reminder, this is equivalent to log base e of three which really means e to what power is 3, okay? We could do this on our calculator if we wanted to. We should be getting a number a little bit larger than 1. e to 1 is roughly 2.718, so e to a slightly larger number would be, um, would be 3. But this is a valid final simplified answer right there. Let's do another one, a little bit more complex. Again, we'll plow, apply the power rule first. Natural log of x cubed minus the natural log of 2x squared. We are bringing these uh, exponents, which were being multiplied out front, into um, the exp exponent position. And then we can uh, do a little bit more simplifying. I'll do natural log of x cubed minus the natural log of 4x squared. I'll apply that exponent of 2 to both pieces, the 2 and the x. And now we can apply our quotient rule again. So we get the natural log of a single expression, x cubed over 4x squared, which can be simplified to be the natural log of x over 4. All right, that would be the simplified uh, final, final answer to that problem. We can solve some 
um, equations as well. Again, applying our properties here. Uh, first thing I'm going to do for this one is let's use the power rule and bring that two out front. And that's going to result in two times the natural log of the quantity x minus three equals four. We can divide both sides by two right now. Okay, and we can work towards uh, solving for x. And we get um, the natural log of x minus three is equal to two. And what I would then do as a last step is just simply remember that log base e of x minus three is the same as the natural log of x minus three. And we can write this in exponential form. e raised to the second power is going to equal x minus three. So I'll get e squared is x minus three. And I can add three to both sides to get my final answer. Okay, and I'm, I, I could certainly go to my calculator and get a decimal approximation, um, but I'm happy with that, with that form right there. Next one, natural log of e squared is x. And one, there are a couple ways of thinking about this, but remember what a logarithm means. A logarithm is asking us what power the base needs to be raised to to get what we're taking the log of. So here we're dealing with the natural log. So what power does e have to be raised to to get e squared? Maybe intuitively you can see that x would have to be two. Another way of thinking about this is let's apply our power rule and bring that two out front. And we get two times the natural log of e equal to x. Okay, we could even divide by two here. Natural log of e is x over two. And think about what the natural log of e means. What does, what, do, what does that mean? This is analogous to thinking about the common log of 10, okay? But the natural log of e is one, right? e to what power gives us e? And it's going to equal one. So we can rewrite this as one equals x over two. So I hope you can see that x would be two. Okay, that was a little bit more of a sort of maybe more formal, com, um, convoluted way of getting an answer. A uh, alternate method would just be to rewrite this in exponential form. Natural log is log base e. e to the x equals e squared. What would x be? Hope you can see that x would have to be two. We'll do a couple more. Um, and these last couple are a little more um, maybe applicable, a little more dem um, they, they demonstrate a little bit more the utility of logarithms in terms of solving for an exponent. So for this first one, we have e to the 2x, 4 times e to the 2x plus 2 is 16. Let's gradually um, uh, remove things or, or um, do the inverse of operations on the left side to gradually dig in towards our x and see if we can and then solve for x. I'm going to subtract 2 first. And then I'm going to divide by 4 as well. So I will get 4 e to the 2x equals 14, meaning e to the 2x, once we divide by 4, is 3.5. So um, I've dealt with um, sort of all the outlying stuff, the, the times 4 and the plus 2. We've pared it down to a pretty pure exponential. Let's write this in logarithm form. And we can write it like so, 2x equals log base e of 3.5. And then remember, two, log base e is just the natural log of 3.5. Okay, I can divide by both sides by two, and I get x is equal to the natural log of 3.5 divided by two. I'll go to my calculator and get a decimal approximation that's roughly 0 0.6264. Okay, we can always do a check. Let's plug things back into our calculator, 0.6264. Um, and I'm checking up in this equation right up here to see if I get 16. I'm going to double my answer for x. I'm going to take e raised to that answer times 4 and plus 2. And as a check, I do get 16.00, a little bit larger than, than 16, actually, 16.0005, simply because this was a, um, a, rounded, a rounded solution. 
Last problem I'll do for this video is um, on the screen now. Hopefully you can see it has a financial connection. Maybe you can imagine we have $1,500. Our goal is to have $2,500. We have a 4% interest rate and we're curious um, what time would have to go by, how many years would have to go by if we're continuously compounding to meet our goal. So just like we did on the prior problem, I'm going to try to pare away the outlying operations first. Let's divide by 1500. And then I'm going to get e to the 0 0.04t equals 1.66 I'm going to try to keep all those decimals in my calculator, try not to do any intermediate rounding. I can simply write this right away in log form, okay? Now that we've um, dealt with a 1500, 0.04t equals the natural log of 1.66 repeating. I can divide both sides by 0.04. And I think you can see that I like getting the exact answer first before I then go to my calculator to get the decimal approximation. So I get a final answer of t is equal to the natural log of 1.66 repeating divided by 0.04. Let's go ahead and do that. And I get approximately 12.77. And the implication here is that that would be years. Think about if that makes sense. Does it make sense for our money at 4% interest to grow from $1,500 to $2,500 over the course of about 13 years? And I think it does make sense to do that. All right, we got through it. That's the natural log or the, that's a good place to stop.